Hello everyone, it's me, Glogar13 Fits, and today I'm going to be doing a commentary on Mike. You know, the guy who basically took over James Nintendo Nerd's channel after James Rolfe was done with his e-begging and decided to start making that AVGN movie. After he started making the movie, there's almost been no AVGN episodes or any of that stuff. Instead, several things have been happened. First off, filler content is mostly being uploaded, you know, like them making commentaries, their own videos, or them, um, or old videos of like James Rolfe, like the one of him doing the other stuff as like in college or something. But this video is him reviewing a game, and it's mostly dull and unfunny until the end where he basically messes up. So. Let's start this video off, shall we? Hey, I was playing some Game Boy games and I came across this Simpsons game called Bart and the Beanstalk. It's a really stupid concept, but let's take a quick look. On the first stage, you progress upward through the beanstalk while collecting coins. Doing this is incredibly hard, though, because of the terrible controls. There's bugs that are crawling along the ground, and you can kill them with two shots from your slingshot, but it's easier said than done. You'll fire your first shot, but the slingshot fires so slow that by the time you get off the second shot, the beetle will have already hurt you, and you lose energy. This happens continually throughout the board, which makes it difficult to progress. Why does the slingshot have to be so delayed? And here we come to the first recurring problem, the joke delivery. When you deliver jokes, it doesn't sound funny at all. It sounds like, why does this have to be like so-and-so? I mean, that's how you deliver the joke. You don't deliver it like the AVGN does at all. And in the end, it's simply not entertaining or funny at all. And the shots that you fire don't go far enough. It goes like one foot and then it disappears. Imagine if you threw a tennis ball at somebody, but as soon as it left your hand, it disappeared into a black hole. Or maybe it's like the transporter gun on Star Trek Deep Space Nine, where the bullets get transported to a faraway land. Yeah, that's it. Bart shoots the slingshot and the projectile ends up killing the Joker in Batman on NES. Quick question, was that supposed to be funny? Because if that was supposed to be funny, then you did pretty bad at making a joke. I mean, seriously, references aren't jokes, and neither is your joke delivery properly executed either. At first, I thought this game would be unoriginal with the whole beanstalk theme, but now that I've seen that they've introduced transporter slingshots, I'm impressed. And sometimes, you'll fire the first shot at the beetle and hit it, but then it moves off screen. You expect it to come back again so you can land your second hit and kill it, but it never comes back. So naturally, I assumed it was dead or just gone because it went off the screen. So I keep walking and it's back, so I had no choice but to get hit. The next thing that's too hard is- Hold on, did you say the next thing that's too hard? If you're saying it like that, that's just making it sound like you absolutely suck at the game no matter if you're playing the worst game in the world. There are other words you could use to describe it, like cheap, or you could talk about how much this game sucks, like the AVGN did, as far as I remember. And by the way, just to let you know, I'm going to skip ahead in this review because it's so boring. It just involves him trying to talk about stuff, but it's not funny nor entertaining in any way. So, I'm just going to skip it, to save you the pain. It was Night of the Treehouse Horror on Game Boy Color. Now before I go on, you might be wondering how I'm recording all these handheld games. I'm guessing not many people care or they just assume it's an emulator, but oh well. For the regular Game Boy games, I just used the Super Game Boy. And for games like Night of the Treehouse, which was a Game Boy Color game, I used the Game Boy Player, which was an attachment that goes on the bottom of the GameCube. I ran into a problem though, the game doesn't seem to load. I tried some other games that I own and they all work fine, so I know the system is okay. So, um, did you try putting the game in any other systems, like an SP? So I figure the battery inside the game must be dead. Uh, oh, uh, I think the game you're trying to fix doesn't have a battery. Plus, if the battery were actually bad, you wouldn't be able to save. Please do research before you make another video. I would just open it up real quick and replace the battery, but here's the problem. 
the screw on the back of the Game Boy Color games requires a very special screwdriver that I don't have. Then why don't you, um, you know, buy one or just get another copy of the game? Last time I checked, the game was only a few bucks on Amazon, so it's not really that hard to find. It's not like you've got um, some rare game. But I have a solution. Now this next part I definitely do not recommend doing at home. Especially not if you're Mike. Because if your mic is, you can see, it didn't work. I read that there's a trick that can be done to open a Game Boy Color without having that special tool. I took an ordinary Bic pen and I lit the end of it on fire until it started to melt. Then I quickly stuck the tip of the pen into the hole so that the plastic would melt around the screw, thus forming my own homemade tool. Then I let it sit and harden for a while and cool off. But here's the thing, when I eventually went back again to use my newly formed tool to open the game, it didn't work. Kids, don't make your screwdrivers out of big pens, or else it won't work. The plastic started to chip away, and it just wouldn't unscrew the game. So don't even bother trying this, because it doesn't even work. Or you could have just used other methods on the internet. On the internet, there are tutorials on how to use pliers to open a Game Boy cartridge. In fact, that's what I've done to repair mine, but you know nothing about gaming, so there. Well, I did everything I could to get this damn thing to work, and of course this was the one Simpsons game that I really wanted to play, too. And let's not forget, kids, if your game doesn't read, all you need is rubbing alcohol and Q-tips. But this guy doesn't know that. ...because it was a horror-themed game. Later I found out that the battery actually only has to do with saving the game, so it looks like my copy of the game is broken. Then why did you say that earlier it was the battery? Turns out, that whole thing was... Utterly pointless. Now, I know what you're thinking. Why not just use an emulator? Well, one of the reasons I even like to do these reviews is to relive the past by playing the games the same way I did when they were released. Using an emulator would take the fun out of it for me. Then why don't you just play it on a Game Boy or something, you know, like a Game Boy Advance SP? Or if you really want to play it the way it was meant to be, then play it on one of those. And even then, newer emulators are closer to the real hardware than they were before. And one last thing. I know you're pulling the no ROMs excuse, but then again the AVGNs used ROMs before. Here's proof. Like my Sega CD video, keep in mind I'm limited to how many games I can review. I'm aware that I'm leaving out popular ones such as Snatcher on the Sega CD and Knuckles Chaotix on the 32X. But remember, if I don't have the game, I can't review it. It's the world needs to know about Ninja Baseball Batman. But right now, the only way to play it is on an emulator. Or if you happen to have access to one of the arcade units. Hey, if the AVGN can use emulators, so can you. And just for the record, yes, there is a video of the actual PCB being played on YouTube. There are actually PCBs of this and there are super guns. If you really want to be a purist, just get a super gun AVGN. But that's off topic. Back to the game review itself. So, all in all, these Simpsons games are just not for me. All in all, this was just a bad review. I skipped out most of it because most of it was basically him being, him basically playing the game and not really knowing much about it and then also throwing in a bunch of unfunny jokes that are not funny at all. And then later on, he basically demonstrates his lack of knowledge and then basically contradicts himself and goes wit on way too long. And then says emulators are crappy in the end is an excuse, even though he could probably get away with it if the AVGN can. I mean, he does have people who are going to blindly thumbs up everything he does. Look at the AVGN. There are people who are like, Mike's good. Don't talk bad about Mike. And speaking of which is for you, Mike. I understand. I think you should make a new channel, and when you make the new channel, don't delete comments or flag people down who make videos about you because that's what you've been doing. Just look at the Archfiend. He's posted links to re-uploads of your terrible um, Elmo and Grouchland review, and what do you do? You just flag it down like a pussy. I mean, that does sell uh, something. And if you do flag this video down, by the way, I'm just going to simply re-upload it to every other non-YouTube site I can. Zipcast, Daily Motion, Media, 
I mean, Meta Cafe, um, Blip TV. There's 50 million video uploading sites I'm just going to upload it to. And I'm guessing you're still going to get a lot of hate because you're using the James Nintendo Nerd channel because as of now, everyone who's subbed to it is going to expect AVGN videos and not your unfunny excuses for reviews. Maybe then you'll get more fans as well. I mean, come on, the Array Gamer has fans, so so can you. All in all, thanks for watching. And one more thing. Please... Don't just blindly thumbs up everything James Nintendo Nerd uploads. Watch it and then realize that not everything uploaded by that channel is the word of God.